Hi hey everybody, and welcome to my review of the Lexmoto Michigan 125cc. As you may know if you watch my channel, I'm not the biggest fan of cruisers. I don't hate them, they just they don't push all my buttons. But when I uh, borrowed the UM Renegade Commando recently, I absolutely fell in love with it because it was so much fun to ride. It was totally unlike I was expecting. I've done videos talking about this, about the differences of riding cruisers and, and how not to expect things from bikes and push yourself outside your normal realms of what you like just to experience things. I will note, uh, these chrome switches are not standard. Uh, these would be black if you buy one at the moment. The plate is up high. Uh, I can see why it's been put there. I can't really see where else you're going to put that, but you know, needs must. Now the astute amongst you might notice that this looks very much like the Sinus Hoodlum, uh, and that is because it is the same model of bike basically. Uh, this one comes in at £1,600, the Hoodlum comes in at £2,200. The main differences between the two are the Hoodlim has the slightly lower bars, it has two horns, and also the suspension is uh, a more adjustable type. It's got one of the uh, nitrogen reservoirs or, or something like that, one of the damper reservoirs, you know, stuck on it. But for £600, that's the difference. There isn't really many features to run over the bike, apart from a couple of things on note. This is where the ignition is. You're on the side classic like a cruiser and the steering lock is a separate lock over here um, you might think that's a little bit sort of weird but my uh, Suzuki DRZ has the exact same thing so it is what it is it is a little old school though before we jump on and look at the controls note this has a center stand and a side stand this bike will not run on its side stand even in neutral so you have to put it on center stand to warm it up say in the winter or you can disable the side stand kill switch if you so choose it's just down to some EU rules as to why it has to be that way. Okay, so we'll jump on, pop it off the centre stand. Oh, I should mention also, this has got a disc brake on the back. There are some Michigans, the Euro 4, some earlier ones, which had drum brakes, but that's now been updated to the new ones, double discs. So, switch gear, as I say, this should be black. High beam, low beam, indicators, horn, hazard switch, starter, light switch, kill switch. Not a lot to it. Fuel indication, oh. there's the horn, uh, there's your fuel indication bar, uh, there is your miles, well the trip at the moment, this clock goes up to 70 miles an hour and I have topped this bike out in a video uh, called Lex Motor Michigan 125cc top speed at around 70 miles an hour and I've also done a video two up on this bike with my other half Reno. The only other thing really to mention is that here along this bottom you have a gear position indicator, neutral, first, second, third, fourth and fifth. Okay, I want to get moving because it is hot today. But I've come to the countryside because I thought it would be nice to go for a little cruise around. This bike's got a great steering angle, it's very manoeuvrable at slow speeds. It is at 7.8 kilowatts of power, so it is a little bit under the limit of what you can have on a CBT. But I've actually, as I say, found that it's perfectly peppy to get you around town. It will do 70, and it can take two people. So sure, it's not the fastest 125 I've ever ridden, but it's also not the slowest. Uh, in comparisons to the UM, this thing is a lot smaller, which can be both a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, it, it's a good thing if you haven't got much space in your garage, because the UM 
took up a lot of space in my garage. I've had a lot of bikes in there uh, over the time that I've been reviewing different bikes and some take up more space than others and that UM just seemed to take up a ton of space. This is much more compact, although obviously with that you get a little bit less space on the bike. But it's not as much as you might think because I found with the UM, the, uh, the rear pillion seat sort of bar was right on my coccyx. Uh, and I just had to make sure I sat forward a little bit so I wasn't leaning on that. On this, it has more of a graduated pillion seat so I can sort of wedge my coccyx into that and it's not particularly uncomfortable. Uh, and I've got still room in front of my knees but obviously I am six foot four. I'm about 15 stone, 15 and a half stone. So I am a pretty big chap to be on a 125. But it doesn't seem to hold it back and that's absolutely fantastic. That's part of the reason why I've come here to the country lanes, because I thought, well, let's go for a cruise around. It's lovely weather. And I, I kind of love my job. I have to say that I'm doing this. <laughs> Just get to go out and explore the countryside. But also it's hilly and hills are the foe of the 125. For 1600 pounds, the build quality of this bike is really good. Uh, you know, it's, it's obviously not the most expensive thing in the world, but it doesn't look 1600 quid. That's kind of incredible that it's that cheap. Uh, it, it, more so when you consider the fact that we, when you buy a new Lexmoto, you'll get a 24 month parts and labor warranty, which is nationwide. So you don't have to just go to your specific dealer. You can go any dealer you wish. And you're also gonna get a year's breakdown cover, unlimited breakdown cover. So you are covered should anything happen. The suspension, it's being highlighted currently, is firm. The front is not quite as firm as the rear. It does give a bit of a bumpy ride on bumps, but it's not that bad, really. I, I am going to um, push the bumpiness that this bike can take later on today. Some of my regular viewers probably know exactly what I mean by that. This bike is made in the Zhongshen factory in China. Um, if you're not aware of how Chinese motorcycles work, Basically, they don't all come from the same factory. Like Lexmoto sell bikes from multiple different factories. So you're gonna get different quality levels, different standards from different factories. Lexmoto do travel out to China a lot. I know this, I speak to people who work for them and you get all the gossip on the inside scoops. Um, and they really do care about making sure that the factories are producing good bikes because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are gonna, you know, they're selling them. They want them to be as good as possible. Zhongshen, if you don't know, is a highly respected brand of Chinese motorcycles, respected, oh, let's drop again, respected for making good bikes. What might surprise you, however, is to discover that in the same factory, the Zhongshen factory, that this bike is built, they also make the new Nortons. Yes, Norton, great old British company, building in Zhongshen. Go! the fastest machine in the world but it is plenty peppy pulls away from the lights good enough that is something I haven't seen in years a roadside picnic proper English squirrel I personally prefer the looks uh, of the UM than the Michigan by the way it is Michigan not Michigan um, <laughs> some people will get very annoyed about that over in America I'm sure so I do prefer the looks, but it's a classic looking bike. And there is something actually that's worth mentioning, which is that you may have noticed that this entire bike is black, basically, apart from the tank. And the reason that Lexmoto has done that, partially, is because they now sell fuel tanks, which are just primered, bare primer. So you can custom paint your own tank, fit it to your bike, and have a really custom looking bike for, you know, I think the tanks are around 80 quid, so you know, you put a couple of hundred quid into it. Uh, you can even get it painted professionally, put it on the bike, and you know, it's gonna look like a unique bike, a one of a kind, your bike. And that would still come in cheaper than the Hoodlim. It's just worth noting, I think, that it's, uh, it's fantastic that you could customize things that much. And there's many other ways you can customize this bike. You know, you can change the bars, change the mirrors. The mirrors, yes, I'm at the mirrors, let's mention that. The mirrors on this bike are preposterously wide and it makes filtering through traffic a wee bit scary because they go beyond the uh, the end of the handlebars, which is normally not something, oh, shouldn't have lost momentum on the hill, 
is not normally something that I notice on bikes. It's normally, you know, your hands are the width, so as long as your hands get through, you're okay. Not in this case. Uh, but also the height of them is van mirror height. It is bang on van mirror height. So uh, yeah, you really do need to be careful when you're filtering or maybe put some different mirrors on it. Although if you're uh, making a, a custom, you could remove the mirrors entirely because it's not required on your MOT to have mirrors fitted. No problem, mate. Oh, that's squirrel. That's squirrel. I think that's something that this bike screams is value. 1600 quid. I bought my first Chinese 125 like eight, no, longer. Oh my God, it's over 10 years ago now. I'm 33 now, I think. Am I 33 or am I 32? I honestly can't remember. <laughs> I was born in 85. Whatever, it was about 10 years ago. I paid £1,400 for my adrenaline. It was nowhere the build quality that this thing is. It had none of the gadgets that this thing has. Uh, and I didn't get nearly the amount of covers that you get these days back then. Uh, it really is quite amazing how much bike you can get for your smaller amount of money. Sure, if you've got the money to spend on some other brand, uh, you'd rather go for that, go for it. It's, that's the wonderful thing about bikes. You can choose whatever you want. But if you don't have a lot to spend and you want a little bit of backup, like I say, knowing that your bike's going to be covered should anything go wrong with it, 1,600 quid. Brakes are good, as you'll note. <laughs> this bike has got link brakes because of the Euro 4 laws and they are very good. Uh, although you do need to be careful with, I found with all cruiser styles, that there isn't a huge amount of weight over the front wheel. It's a narrow tyre. And if you're on a bit of a loose surface and you yank that front brake on, it's going to lock up a bit. Same can be said for a lot of bikes, but I've noticed, I think, where it's got a lack of weight over the front end, it's something that's more noticeable in uh, cruisers. I've just realised I've taken a wrong turn. And I will need to do a U-turn. Well, what a good opportunity to show you a turn in the road and how easy it can be. Check. Okay, I didn't do that as smoothly. So yeah, good manoeuvrability to get around cars and stuff with filtering, just these mirrors are, are way on out there. Obviously this bike is fuel injected, the fuel injection system is nice and smooth and progressive, perfectly adequate. The gearbox is quite smooth and a couple of false neutrals, but mainly that was to do with the, to do with the position of the gear, uh, gear shifter and I actually gave that a bit of a shift so it's more comfortable for me. I think what caused that was the fact, oh, hold on, let me just make sure I'm going the right way here. Yeah, I want to go up here and then turn left. Um, was the fact that I, where I'm very tall, my feet are in a slightly different position, so I need to be at a slightly different angle. What a view, man. Let's put it in fifth and cruise. 45 miles an hour. Engine is just ticking over. Smooth ride. It's taking out the worst of the bumps. It's not too jarring. It's pleasant. It's very pleasant. Now, obviously, comfortable cruising speed on this bike, say on a dual carriageway, is going to be around 55, 60. It will do 70, but you are going to be putting a little bit of pressure on the engine at that point. But then it's a 125 and they kind of live through that. I know I, I pinned my 125 around everywhere for well over 20,000 miles and that thing did fine. I don't think people who are into cruisers are necessarily too concerned about top speed figures, performance figures. They just want a comfortable bike to ride and it is very comfy. The seat is nice and squidgy. I do need to make sure I sit more upright, but this is a byproduct of uh, being so damn tall. The exhaust is very quiet, no doubt about it. Uh, I think they make a system, a louder, more open system for this bike, so that will give you a little bit more volume if you want to be heard in town or if you just want to have a bit of more of a loud bike. That stuff's available from uh, Chinese Motorcycle Parts Online. See, it does pick up when you give it time. And that's, uh, that's another thing to talk about, the, the fun of these cruisers, as I mentioned with the UM, and, and probably more so with this one, because it's lighter, because it's got 
uh, a different sized front wheel, thinner tyres. The agility of these things is unbelievable. I mean, I've been scraping the foot pegs on this quite regularly, both on purpose and by accident. It is perfectly possible to scrape the foot plates in a corner if you try a little bit or if you just happen to turn quite sharply and the bike gets a bit of an extra lean on. I will demonstrate on an appropriate corner. I will mention at this point a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. You're amazing and you help support me to continue bringing these videos to you. And the more that you that join, the more I can do. So thank you. Links in the description. And if you wish to support this channel in any other way, there's also links in the description to that for the merch and stickers and all those sorts of things. So thank you if you choose to. You can see here we're going up hills. I'm in third. The engines may, I mean, I have no rev counter, so I can't tell you what the revs are, but about three quarters of the way up, I would say, 7,000 RPM maybe. This bike has got some very good engine braking. I'll show you now. <laughs> okay, that was maybe a little too much, but as you can see, you can actually have quite a lot of fun on this little bike. There isn't a massive amount to actually say about this bike because it's, it is an honest 125cc cruiser. Uh, it's faster than some of the 125cc cruisers I've ridden with. My god. My old mate Ginger had a uh, Suzuki Marauder and my god, that thing was slow. No offence if you own a Marauder, maybe they've made them better since then, but I can tell you now, it wasn't as peppy as this. And this bike covers all bases. You know, you can go for a ride on the country roads, go to the city, commute, go to work, go to college. The only place obviously that it's gonna fall down is where any other 125 would fall down, which is long distance, dual carriageway, needing to sit above, you know, 65, getting towards 70. One of my very kind patron supporters, my Festu, challenged me to wheelie this bike. And I've run it up to an hour, I forgot, so I better do it. Here you go, mate. See so that? Just straight up there, 12 o'clock. <laughs> well, I, d I have absolutely no idea where I am now. I need to look on the horizon for big tall hills, but frankly, I don't really mind. I've got a, I've got a tank full of fuel, so I'll go on forever. These cruises, 125s as well, just in general, but these cruises just absolutely sip their fuel. The economy is fantastic. I can't give you a figure because it's so high that you don't care but it's going to be somewhere around the 100 mile to the gallon mark. They always are 125s. I'm now going to make my way up what I happen to know to be one of the steepest hills around here. It goes from the bottom to the top of Butter Hill pretty much. It is a sizable hill. Uh, just while I'm giving you my conclusion really, because I really don't think there's much more to say on this one. It is a basic 125cc cruiser. The looks in the, in the eye of the beholder, the build quality is perfectly acceptable for 1600 quid. I was actually kind of surprised this bike was only 1600 quid. I was like, really? I mean, if they'd said to me it was 18, 1900, I'd have been like, okay, fair enough. But 1600? Okay, we're in third and we're just going to see if we can stay in third. Okay, it's getting quite a lot steeper now. Still doing okay in third. Now it's starting to struggle. Now we're getting onto the much steeper bit. But it's still doing it. Let's go for a second. Back in the third. You see, I am coming up a big hill here. I've missed out any questions that you have feel free to drop a comment below uh, I know some of my subscribers are Michigan owners um, and also if you want to join the Spice 110 uh, community Facebook group you'll find that there is a really helpful group of people on there over 600 of them at this point who will help answer your questions they have experience in these types of bikes a very helpful group of people don't swipe me I've just realised I can't end this video yet because I haven't scraped a peg, have I? I'll make it happen. We've got to come to the top of the hill before we can go back down again. Oh, that was a bump.
Yeah. Well, if it's got me to the top of this, it should do fine round town. So as I say, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like because I'm about to scrape this peg and I'll catch you next time. I'll actually have to really try to do this. Oh crap. That was a genuine mistake. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.